We're good to go with the co-leader of the Greens, Russell Norman, with us now. Good morning, Russell. Can you hear me? I can hear you this morning. Nice to nice to hear you as well. Um, let's first up talk about oil exploration. Um, you guys, uh, the Greens, have come out and said, "Oh heck, Shell um, don't seem to be having a good record with um, with their um, oil rigs uh, in the North Sea at the moment. It's a bit of a leak going on there, um, and they are planning on exploring here in the Southern Ocean as well. Where, whereabouts are they planning this exploration?" Uh, it's kind of off the southeast uh, coast of the South Island, uh, so it's pretty deep water. It's pretty wild water, um, and if anything goes wrong, like they're having something going wrong in the North Sea at the moment, mm. there's pretty much no way to get any help. Mm. Um, they, um, uh, yeah, you know, they say that they've got all the safety um, plans in place. Uh, they've got the, some kind of special capping thing that I, I suppose the BP chaps didn't have. Um, they say if anything goes wrong, we'll sort it out. Yep, it's, um, that's right. They've got their special cap. It's a, it's a big cap, and it says shell is okay, and they put it over underwater things <laughs> if they look dangerous. So you can relax. <laughs> you can relax because just because it took BP months and months and months with all the best drilling equipment in the world in the Gulf of Mexico, Mexico surrounded by dozens and dozens of drilling rigs, just one drilling rig off the, in the wild, you know, South Sea, Southern let's, Ocean. Let's, let's, fine. let's cut to the chase, right? It's all BS. It's all total and utter BS. Yeah, it's total bullshit. There's no, no question about it. They cannot fix a problem. We, they don't know how to fix a problem in deep water. Um, the only way they did it before was they drilled relief wells to try to take the pressure off the problem. Mm. Um, there won't be any rigs around to drill relief wells. Because watching the news item on this last night, um, yeah, they were saying that, that if, if anything did go wrong, if there was a spoil, a, 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 you know, a spill, then we'd pay for it. But I'm thinking, oh, that's nice, oh, that's nice, they'll pay for it. But hang on, we don't want the spill in the first place, you morons. <laughs> yeah, that's right, they'll pay for it. Yeah, pr- yeah. Yeah, so right. might, don't might, want, we don't want our oceans ruined by lots and lots of oil. They might pay. Like they can't fix. They might pay for it, but st- we're still going to have like these big oil slicks, you know, sl- you know, covering our beaches and covering all the wildlife and whatnot. What a, what a ridiculous situation! How could New Zealand possibly uh, even get anywhere near this stuff? Well, it's desperate stuff. I mean, it's desperate on two ways. It's desperate because we're trying to get the last of the hydrocarbons and. You know, like the end of the age of fossil fuels isn't going to end with a whimper, it's going to end with a bang um, because demand just keeps escalating and so we keep getting desperate to find the stuff wherever we can, no matter how dangerous. Mm. And it's desperate in another way because this government doesn't have an economic plan. Their only economic plan is more of the frontier. Let's go and find some natural capital and burn it, Um, just like we did with the whales and the seals and the cowrie forests and the kahikatea and the carry gum and everything else, we just slowly make our way through our natural resources it's, until there's nothing left. It's like a bunch of cowboys with big hats and guns and, you know, dancing, wee-hee, shooting into the air and all that kind of thing. It's it's absolutely moronic. It's just out of this world. Um, what about this issue of um, of fracking as well? They're looking at um, fracking in, uh, or hydraulic fracturing in Southland, uh, which is a process of injecting you know, millions of gallons of water that has been uh, uh, you know, treated with uh, over 500 chemicals injected into um, the shale rock to um, force natural gas up. Uh, many, plenty of problems with this in the States at the moment with um, in, infected water supplies and um, gas ending up in people's water supplies, all, all sorts of kind of crazy stuff. But they reckon they can do it safely here in New Zealand, Russell. Yeah, well, you know, that's... Um They've started doing it in Taranaki where they've been using um, diesel um, as the injecting uh, uh, element instead of water. Gee, that's nice. So they've in, been injected, they injected it about 500,000 litres at a time of diesel um, as well as all the other chemi- the, kind of add, the other toxic chemicals they add to it. And so they drill a hole and shove diesel down into the ground to try to fracture up the rocks. Um, to release more hydrocarbons. It's, um, the, the, the problem is, is that you just get enormous problems with contamination of groundwater, mm. and it's very difficult to stop um, the contamination of the groundwater, and it's, that, that's why there's a moratorium in New South Wales, Quebec, France has stopped it altogether, various parts of the United States have all put a moratorium on fracking. I mean, it doesn't take a, a you know, brain surgeon to realise that if you're injecting this stuff into the ground, it's got to come up somewhere, right? It's got to come in... And it's got you know all these water systems under 
under the earth are all connected, uh, you know, and, and, and all these reservoirs, they all lead into each other. It's all going to come back to haunt us. Well, not according to the Taranaki Regional Council, um, because we had a because there's, there's there's been about something less than twenty fracking operations in Taranaki, and um, the Regional Council is the consenting agency in terms of protecting the environment. So we asked them whether there any risks of leakage, and they said there can be no leakage. Um, that's there can <laughs> that's be no leakage, right? Okay, zero. zero. They, no, they, it's not just that there isn't; it's that they can be no leakage. So who's it's not possible? Who's being who's being paid off at the Taranaki Council? Who's who's getting money? <laughs> who's getting petroleum money there at the Taranaki Council? I don't know what's going on over, on, I don't know, over at Taranaki Regional Council, but they, they there's not an environmental risk because there can be no leakage, according to the chief executive from the Taranaki Regional Council. Absolute bunker. So they've like so they've just um, a priori ruled out any environmental problem by making it clear that there can't be a leak. And you know what? It's when, unbelievable. When stuff goes wrong, when stuff goes wrong, they'll just wipe their hands of it. Oh no no no. They promised us, and they'll pass the buck to someone else. Someone, someone will pass the buck to someone else, and no one will be held culpable. When, yeah. it, when, when the shit hits yeah. the fan, no one's going to stand up and say, "Oh, actually, you know, we got it wrong." Yeah, that's right. That's right. You're right. I am right, Russell Norman. You're right too. Thanks very much for your time on the show. <laughs> we'll talk to you next he week. Agreement. Okay. <laughs> See, See you, Emma.